In this video, we're going to cover everything you will learn from the UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1 tutorial course. This is the essential beginner's guide to getting started with Unreal Engine 5. It's the only course you will need to start using Unreal Engine 5 completely from scratch. And we'll cover all the important information you need to know in order to get started very quickly. It spans three modules, 11 plus hours, and has 40 videos. And you can download right now by clicking on the link in the description box, or if you are on worldlevelldesign.com website watching this video, then you'll already be on the page to download it. So let's get into each module and each video and what you will learn from this entire course. So here's what you can expect from the first module of the course. We're going to start off with how to download and how to install Unreal Engine 5. I'll show you what you need to download first, and then how to get any version of Unreal Engine. We'll then cover how to create your first project and launch the editor, because you cannot start the editor unless you have a project associated with it. And we'll cover all the steps you need to set that up correctly. Then we'll cover how to manage UE5 projects, because eventually you're not going to be working with one single project, you might have multiple projects you're working on, and I'll show you how to manage them, how to find files that are within that project, and a few other useful managing methods of keeping UE5 projects organized. We'll then go into interface overview, where we jump right into the editor and our first project, and we'll cover all the necessary panels that you will see when you launch the editor for the first time, and what all these different windows mean. So you'll have an idea of the entire interface overview and what each of the panels and windows do. You'll then learn how to start, save, and open new levels. And these are the levels that you're going to begin to use to create your environments in. You'll then learn how to master viewport navigation. This is how to navigate inside the perspective viewport as well as orthographic viewports. And I'll give you all the shortcuts you need to start mastering the viewport navigation inside Unreal very quickly. We'll then go into viewport mode options and important options within each viewport that you need to know that you will be switching to periodically to test your environment to see what it looks like in game, as well as maybe switching over to a wireframe, unlit, or some other viewport modes to help you create environments. We'll then cover how to work with objects or actors inside the editor, how to select them, how to rotate, how to scale, so you can start using these objects inside the editor and just be able to work with them. This is something you're going to be using and doing all the time, and we'll cover every aspect of working with these objects so you know what to do with each actor inside your level. Then we'll go into the content browser and how to use it. The content browser is a very important panel, and it's objects management system. This is where all of your assets, such as textures and materials, 3D models or static meshes, and many other are kept for you to use inside your environments, inside your levels. And we'll cover how to filter, how to look for objects, and just overall how to use the content browser, because that's something you're going to be using a lot. Then we'll go into how to playtest right inside the editor. There are different options for playtesting, either in a viewport or in a separate window, and we'll cover all the options that you need to know in order to playtest your environments in real time right inside the editor. Then we'll begin an exercise to recreate the default level, one of the levels that comes with Unreal Engine Editor. And it's an important exercise because we'll cover how to recreate the default map template and what actors or what objects you need to insert in order to set up the lighting situation that you see in the default map and how all of these actors work together to create and give you this lighting situation. And it will be important for you to know what these actors are how to insert them, and how to make them work together. And then we'll go into how to control auto exposure or eye adaptation. This is when your eye naturally adjusts whenever you walk from a dark environment or dark room into a bright room or outside, and vice versa when you walk from a bright environment from outside and you walk inside into a darker room, and your eyes automatically adjust to compensate. And inside UU5, this is replicated as auto exposure or eye adaptation. And you will notice this in a lot of levels when you begin to create them, then the light automatically compensates depending if you are in a dark area of the environment or in a bright area. And you see this auto adjustment taking place. And I'll show you how to control it and how to disable it because it's important for you to work with your environment without this auto adjustment taking place, without this auto exposure. So this first module is an overview of the editor. 
and it will give you all the important aspects of starting with Unreal Engine Editor. So you can begin to feel more comfortable using it and to start creating environments in. Then comes module two. In this module, we go past the beginner basics of using the editor and actually begin creating environments with it. So the second module is focused on environment creation and we cover a lot. We begin with character scale and judging proportions. This is going to be very important for you to understand how to create your environments, your levels to correct scale and how to judge proportion so your world doesn't appear too big or too small. And this is usually the number one mistake that beginners make. So in this first video, we cover how to avoid this problem. Then we go into architecture scale and dimensions. And I show you the dimensions to use for some of the most commonly used architecture sizes, such as for walls, for doorways and doors, and for stairs. And these are going to be really good numbers for you to start with in order to, again, build your world to correct scale. And then you can use these average dimensions and expand from it to make it match to the environment you're creating or to the human reference scale you have inside your map. Next, we go into Static Mesh Overview. Static meshes in UE5 are 3D models. These 3D models were created inside 3D modeling application, such as Maya, 3ds Max, Blender, and then they are imported into UE5 for you to use. And static meshes are going to be the primary asset that you will be using to create your environments with. So most of the things that you see inside the level, such as houses, buildings, roads, props, are static meshes or 3D models. So in this video, we'll cover some of the important properties you need to be aware of when working with static meshes. Then we go into how to actually use the static meshes that we included within the project, within the starter content, to begin creating a, an environment. And you'll learn the most commonly used techniques and ways of creating an environment using the static meshes that we already included within the project. You'll learn all the shortcut keys you need to know about how to duplicate, how to position the static meshes, and how to construct this environment. So this is going to be a very important video because you're going to be doing this type of workflow and this type of environment creation a lot. Then for the next two videos, we cover how to texture your environments. First, we cover the difference between textures and materials inside UE5 and what is one used for versus the other. And then we go into how to work with materials and apply them to your environment in order to texture your environment. So after these few videos, you'll already know how to use existing static meshes to create environments, how to build that environment to correct scale, proportion, and dimension, as well as how to texture your environment using materials in UE5. So these videos alone are going to be the core fundamentals of how to create environments inside UE5. But we are not done with this module because for the next few videos, we cover the modeling mode. This is where it gets really fun. Modeling mode in UE5 allows you to create your own custom static meshes. And there's a lot of options inside the modeling mode. So we go over most of them, especially the ones you need to know to begin creating your own custom static meshes and how to texture them, how to apply materials on them. So that will require you to UV them using the modeling mode. So we begin with the basics of the modeling mode and how to create some basic static mesh geometry right inside UE5 and just how overall to work within the modeling mode. Then we focus on the create section where I show you how to use the create tool mode and begin to poly extrude your meshes, how to use poly path, how to use the revolve tool, how to duplicate and use the pattern mode, as well as how to merge your meshes into one. So you can have multiple shapes that you create and then you combine them all into one single static mesh for more complexity. I also will show you how to modify your pivot points on static meshes something you'll be doing a lot in order to control where that pivot point is on your 3D models. We then go deeper into poly and try editing modeling tools. This is where you'll be able to implement some of the more commonly used modeling tools to create more complexity within your mesh, such as using extrude, offset, push and pull, bevel, and many others. And we cover so much in this video alone that will give you a strong foundation for being able to edit and model more complex shapes, more complex static meshes. Then we cover polygroups and what polygroups are. Polygroups are a group of triangles that can be easily edited using the poly editing mode. 
because inside UE5 everything is triangles, there are no quads, everything is triangulated. So the way that modeling mode works to make things easier for you to model is you're able to assign a polygroup to a selection of triangles in order to make your editing far more easier than having to deal with individual triangle selection. So polygroups is something you absolutely need to know about so you can edit them and create your own polygroups tomorrow. Then we cover how to work with materials and most importantly, how to UV your custom static meshes that you modeled. Inside the modeling mode, you're able to use the UV tools in order to make the textures or the materials you apply onto your static meshes, make them appear on them correctly. Because as you model your meshes inside the modeling mode, your surfaces are going to get distorted. The UVs are going to get messed up. So that means you're going to have a lot of stretching and a lot of distortion whenever you apply material onto your mesh. So to fix this, you need to UV them. And we cover how to use some of the commonly used projection modes and UV tools inside the modeling mode. So we go into auto UV and different methods for doing so. How to use project tool, how to use X form UVs, which is probably my favorite one to use and super useful and effective and how to work with layout and the attribute editor to tweak your UVs. Then for the next three videos, we go into using all the tools and all the techniques we've covered for how to create your own custom static meshes. We create a six asset modular pack. It's six pieces of geometry that we create six static meshes that can be used together to snap to each other to create bigger worlds. So we go through and we model a wall, a floor, ceiling, a window, a rounded column, and a doorway. We then UV and apply material to all of these. And then we create a small interior environment using all these six modular meshes we created. And then we use some starter content to detail and introduce some props. So there's a lot of information and a lot of techniques, tips, and workflows covered in the second module. And you will be ready to create, to model your own environments after going through the second module. And then this third module, we're going to entirely focus on lighting and atmosphere effects. In the first video, we're going to focus on lighting overview of how lights are used in UE5. We'll cover different ways you can light environments inside UE5, such as static lighting, dynamic lighting, and a hybrid in between stationary, and what the difference between all of them are. And we'll talk about Lumen, which is the new dynamic lighting system in UE5. And that's the one we're primarily going to use to light our environments in this third module. Then we'll begin lighting environments. And the first thing we'll focus on is exterior lighting and all the lighting actors you need to insert into your level to light exterior worlds. Then we'll focus on interior lighting and which lights you need to know to light interiors. And of course, the combination of both exterior lighting actors and interior lighting actors by combining these two videos together, we'll be able to light environments that contain an outside and inside together. And we'll do a lighting exercise where we use everything we've covered so far and light and environment that we created in the second module. We'll go through all the common problems that you may encounter as you begin to light and we'll tweak some properties for the lights by going through this very important lighting exercise, kind of taking everything we learned so far and put it into practice. Then we'll cover how to use sky atmosphere. This is an actor that creates an atmosphere and a sky sphere, a sky box around your level. We've already been inserting it into our map and this gives us the sky itself. But in this video, we'll go into the properties of tweaking the sky atmosphere to set up any type of Earth-like environment or even outside planet environments. A sky atmosphere is incredibly powerful of setting up any atmosphere of your world depending where it takes place. We'll then cover how to use exponential height fog. This will add its own fog effect into your level and you can make this fog very dense or just create a bit of a fog-like effect on top of using everything else, such as sky atmosphere with the exponential height fog. Then we'll dive in deeper into post-process volume, and this will allow you to create anything visually about your environment and change how your world looks. You can change any color you want, you can adjust contrast, saturation, and we'll cover everything you need to know in order to change the visual aspects of how the player will see your environment. And with post-process volume, you can pretty much do anything you want and change any aspect of color and how it looks. And then for the next three videos, we'll cover how to use particle effects, how to add sound into your level, and how to use blueprint. Now with these three, we're not going to cover how to we actually create them 
because they require its own tutorial course to go in deeper. But I'm going to show you how to use these inside your level, where you can find some examples of particle effects, sounds, and blueprints within the solder content, and what each of them do, as well as how to use them inside your levels and begin to experiment and work with them. And then we'll cover how to take high resolution screenshots inside your V5. There's two ways to do so. You can take a standard screenshot using a shortcut key, or you can have a menu that will take a high resolution screenshot. And I will also show you how to insert a dedicated camera that you can pilot and look through and then adjust some properties and then take a screenshot from the camera itself. So this way you're not taking a screenshot from the perspective viewport, but you can drag a camera, set up your shot and take a screenshot from this camera itself. So this is a very important module and we tie everything we've been doing already in module one and two. And we focus on lighting and atmosphere effects so you can finish up your environment. So after going through all these three modules and all the tutorials with it, you will be in the perfect position to begin creating your own environments yourself. This is the complete beginner's guide to start using and creating with Unreal Engine 5. So hit that link, get the course, watch all the videos and begin creating yourself. Download UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1 today.